Okay, so I know I promised to release a video on my experience building a TV typewriter, and I will get to that. Unfortunately, it's kind of taking a while to unpack and organize the whole process. Anyway, in the interim, this showed up. This is a pretty rare piece of Apple hardware, the Apple Color Monitor 100. Not to be confused with a host of other monitors bearing the Apple Color moniker, this one is really rare. This was an RGB monitor capable of up to 16 colors that could be used either with the Apple IIe or the Apple III. The promise of RGB was that it would offer a nice, crisp picture without the bleed-through and fuzziness of standard Apple II composite video. Supposedly, by changing an internal switch, it could also be adapted for use with the 2GS in an 8-color mode. Otherwise, this is basically like a PC CGA or EGA monitor. When Steve Wozniak released the original Apple II, he impressed many with his ability to essentially trick color out of an NTSC monitor or television set while using a relatively small number of chips. However, several years on, Apple's graphics were looking aged and kind of ugly next to competitors like the Commodore 64 and the IBM PC. In fact, the Apple III came with a color RGB option right out of the box, although few people bothered with it. The Apple IIe required an upgrade card known as the extended 80 column card with RGB support. There were other cards available also. This replaced the standard 80 column card found in most Apple IIe's and kept the 80 column text mode while also adding 64 kilobytes of RAM and RGB support. When I was doing my homework on this monitor I learned that the original suggested retail price was close to $600. However, subsequent research showed it was often retailing for quite a bit more, although sometimes with discounts added. I suspect that probably had something to do with its lack of success in the marketplace. The Apple IIe was already an expensive proposition in the mid-80s, and a monitor and card that added half the cost again were bound to be unpopular when most could get by with a cheap composite monitor or TV set. The Apple III, meanwhile, was pitched as a business machine, and why would you need color for that? Today, funny enough, this monitor sells on eBay for typically close to around its original suggested retail price. I've been on a quest to buy one for years, but objected to paying $600. I decided to keep looking, and a few years later my patience paid off. I scored this one for $199, and it even came with its original box, although thankfully not with the styrofoam inserts. I actually try to avoid comes with box purchases that have the original padding, because it puts me in a bind storage-wise. Boxes take up space, and you can't flatten the original packing materials. So you're under pressure then to keep whatever belongs in the box in the box, otherwise you're just taking up space. But yeah, not the case here, so I won't feel bad cutting the tape and folding it flat. Besides, who would want to keep this rare beauty boxed up in a closet anyway? Let's pop it out here and have a look. In my unfridging video, I mentioned having bought this in an RGB card for the 2E, but ended up not shipping the monitor with the other stuff. Because of how rare this thing is and the risks inherent in shipping any kind of CRT monitor, I opted to ship it separately and have my freight forwarder repack it extra carefully with a double box to protect it. And that seems to have paid off, albeit with one corner that got chipped off and mysteriously missing screws at the back. I've kind of poorly attached the corner here. I probably should have paid a bit more attention to that, but uh, I'm gonna take it off later and straighten it out. I just didn't wanna lose the little piece. It's a pretty attractive looking monitor overall though. It's actually not quite as big as it appears in pictures. It's only a couple hands or so wide. The CRT itself is about 12 inches. Design-wise, Apple went to some effort to make it conform to both computers it was intended to be used with. It bears a lot of resemblance to the Apple monochrome monitor that was common with the 2E, including a tilt screen function. However, it also has this angle at the front here to meet the rising edge of the Apple III. Admittedly, when it's placed on the Apple III, it looks a little less clean than the monochrome monitor 3 does, but Apple had to conform with the width of the 2E, obviously, which is narrower. The overall design is pretty basic. Under this door you have your brightness and contrast, along with a button that switches the screen into a green monochrome mode. Beside the power button is a little switch that controls the tilt of the monitor. Pull it out, and the CRT will move continuously up and down using a clever geared mechanism until you release it. At the back we have the vertical sync controls and a 15-pin RGB output. I appreciate the boxy design and the two-tone color scheme. We've got a bit of yellowing setting in, but not much. I think this monitor has probably spent a lot of its life in its box. But for this video, I'm going to be doing some comparisons of the output of this RGB monitor versus composite on the 2E. I'm also going to show it working with the computer that originally got me interested in this monitor, the Apple III, and see how color changes the experience there. The first thing we need to do is install the RGB card into the 2E's 80 column card slot. The Apple IIe I'm using here is my go-to Apple II machine. It's an unenhanced unit that was basically a facelift of the original IIe design. It's got a little asset tag here that leads me to believe it, like so many other IIe's, belong to a school. The pigtail with the RGB connector can be bolted into the backplate of the case, but I'm not going to do that here as I'm not sure I'll be keeping the card in this particular machine. 
I'll just lay the ribbon cable flat over the back here where it won't get pinched or cut, and then I'll place the case lid carefully over the top. There we go. A little hook up here, and now we're ready to get this show on the road. A quick note before we get going though, it is notoriously difficult to faithfully reproduce what you see on a CRT screen in person versus on a camera. My camera noticeably degrades the image of the monitor, so you'll have to take my word for it when I compare quality between it and the composite option. All right, so here is our setup, and basically what I've done is I've got the Apple Color Monitor 1 up on top of the Apple IIe. I've just got a single Unidisc here for our purposes, because I just don't feel like setting up two. And I don't have the Duo Disc, which looks really badass if you have the monitor on top of it. Uh, then the thing just looks like a giant tower of power. And then over here, I've set up a composite monitor, which is also being driven by this Apple IIe, just so we can do a side-by-side -side comparison of what the graphics and text look like. And the first thing we'll do is we'll turn this monitor on. I love that little do that it does. And as you can see, if I put this button out, and just watch that, you see it goes down, and then it begins to tilt back up. And then it tilts back down again. I'll just get it to position with the camera so it's aligned. And yeah, basically it's just a, a gear and it just sort of slowly winds around and then back up again and then back down again. Uh, it's really neat how the mechanism works. Um, probably not strictly speaking necessary, but <laughs> it's a nice feature to have anyway. So I thought what we do is we just kind of run through a gamut of software, uh, you know, word processing, games, and just see how the two monitors compare to one another and whether this monitor was really worth $598. I don't know off the top of my head what the Apple Color 2 monitor retailed for. I want to say it was probably a couple hundred bucks at least. Uh, I might be wrong on that though. Uh, but of course, you know, if you were an Apple II user at the time, there's a good chance you might have been using your TV, in which case you didn't have to pay for a monitor at all. So that had to be weighed against this. And I mentioned this in my unfridging video. Uh, in addition to all the standard modes, uh, the RGB card also supports uh, 560 pixels by 192 pixels with monochrome, 140 pixels with 190. 140 pixels by 192 pixels with full 16 color capability and a mix of 560 by 192 pixels and 140 by 192 pixels anywhere on screen. So it'll be interesting to kind of test that out. I wasn't able to find any software that officially supported those modes. Um, not, not on paper anyway, but I did find the Video 7 demonstration disc for this, so we should be able to see what it actually looks like. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna fire it up into Apple Basic and just play around in there, see how it compares. And I don't know why this is coming out yellow. According to the jumpers on the card, it should be white, just like this, but it comes out as a yellowy color for some reason. So I don't know if that's an issue with the monitor or the card or something else, or maybe the uh, manual's wrong, but uh, control reset. So we're in basic. This is the classic countdown program. So yeah, I mean, if this was white, It'd be pretty close. I, I, I'd be hard pressed to really notice a difference there. Um, this is obviously smaller. The screen is physically smaller. And uh, yeah, I don't, with, with the color killer going, yeah, it's not such a big difference to me there. Now let's try putting it into 80 column mode. And again there, if we just not account for the difference in color, I don't know why the uh, cursor's coming out white, but the, uh, the text is still that browny yellow. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's, that's pretty darn close. I don't know, if, if, if I were going to buy this and do a comparison and I saw that, I'd probably be like, eh, that doesn't look different enough to me. So now we'll move on to our first game. Uh, <laughs> I think this one's appropriate because uh, 
This was the only game that I actually played on a real Apple IIe back in the day when these were current, uh, probably 1984, 85, somewhere in there. I used to get sent to the library with a couple of gifted kids. <laughs> And uh, we would play Carmen for a few hours a week in there while the teachers did kind of remedial stuff with the other students. So that was kind of fun. And we'll just fire this up. Still love Carmen. Still uh, a favorite of mine. I just fire it up and quickly go through it. And added challenges, I play it without the almanac. I just sort of basically go on memory and try to figure things out by the clues rather than relying on the almanac to tell me which country it might be. And I do pretty good. Yeah, there's a pretty substantial difference there. Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, look at how grainy that is compared to that. Yeah, I mean, the, the coloring's a little different. This is definitely, uh, I mean, that's really sharp. That is way sharp. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> honestly, if I had a choice, I'd probably go with that on this one. I mean, the color's a little richer here, but this is just so much more clear. Uh, you can definitely see some of the uh, color fringing there in the text. I think that's just a legacy of the way it's programmed. Now, I think the 2E monitor kind of exaggerates things a little bit because it's a bigger monitor and I believe it has a better dot pitch. I've put this on my 1702 and the grainy texture is not as pronounced on that one. And I think that maybe just because it's smaller, you can definitely see some fringing going on. It's nowhere near as sharp as this. I'll just sign in quickly and have a look. Rookie. I am no rookie. Bangkok. <laughs> oh, that used to give us so much joy as immature 10 year olds. A sacred white elephant. Now, how do you steal that? You stole a white elephant. Think about that. I just want to see one of the pictures of the cities just to compare and then we'll move on. Yeah, I mean, the color's a little brighter and more varied here, but uh, I mean, that looks great. That's really nice and sharp. Yeah, it's a matter of taste really. There's, there's definitely a more high intensity blue going on here. This is more of like a cyan, but yeah, I can't say that would really bother me so much. Look at the hull of the ship and uh, it's much brighter purple than there, but all the same. Yeah, no, I, uh, this monitor is definitely winning me over. Okay, so the next one we're gonna try is a business application, the famous VisiCalc. And we'll just put it in 40 column mode and see how it looks. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean that's pretty sharp too. Let's see how it looks at monochrome. Yeah, I mean that looks pretty good too. Yeah, I don't know though. It's I, I don't know based on this if I was doing it for business purposes if I'd really be inclined to spend the extra money on the RGB because yeah, it's it's not a big enough difference to me. I mean it looks great but it's not as pronounced as I thought it was. I thought for sure RGB would kick composites, but on text mode applications, but uh, yeah, I don't, uh, it's not a big difference there. Okay, so for our next one, we're gonna try Dazzle Paint. I think that's what it's called, or Dazzle Draw, sorry, Dazzle Draw. Uh, yeah, I mean, they look pretty close. Let's. I have to use a joystick because for some reason I can't find my Apple IIe mouse. 
Okay. Uh, my joystick needs a little bit of calibration. <laughs> Still wants to drift that way. There, that kind of functions like a mouse. Uh, let's see. I've forgotten how to do this. Okay, spray paint. So yeah, you can see the colors definitely have more intensity. There's our spray paint. Let's do paintbrush. I'm not really much of a drawing kind of person, but I'll just throw some stuff on there. And yeah, and you can see that's supposed to be purple, but the uh, the RGB card is interpreting it as basically white lines, slightly green. Uh, let's go with a flood fill. And there we go. Yellow. Yeah, it definitely looks more yellow over here. I don't know, maybe the monitor's got some intensity issues going on. I'm kind of starting to wonder now if it's just slightly off, but in terms of the clarity, like this is way clearer than that is. It's it's not even close. So yeah, there's a definite, uh, there's a definite advantage there. Let's see what other stuff we have, have shapes. I mean, if you compare, this is supposed to be green and that's green there. So yeah, there's, I don't know, maybe that's the way it's supposed to be. But yeah, it's it's way sharper. If the colors were a little more in tune here, I would definitely say I would choose this over that, especially for something like this. It's just so nice and sharp. All right, that's Dazzle Draw. Okay, next up is the Video 7 demonstration disc. So this will be definitely more to the RGB cards forte. Now see there we've got a nice blue color, red, green, blue. So I guess maybe the RGB just sort of interprets color a little bit differently because that is a nice clear white, clear black, gray. I'd have to find a picture somewhere of a, a known working RGB setup to compare it, but I'm pretty sure that's what it's supposed to look like. So let's do the business demo. Let's, let's do some business. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's so much better. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I would not uh, want to be looking at that all day for sure. Yeah, this is where RGB really shines. That should be a bit more yellow though, but I think that should be a bit more yellow, but yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty nice. And you see how blotchy it got when it switched to 80 column. Okay, let's do word processing. Let's see what that looks like. Nice. Yeah, that looks good. That does not, but that's probably not fair because I'm 99% sure this software isn't written to do a direct comparison with composite. So everything you're seeing here has been basically optimized for this card and the composite is basically just interpreting it as whatever it thinks it happens to be. Uh, okay, let's do an art, sh let's do art showcase. Looks pretty nice. It's pretty, pretty impressive. Is it $900 impressive? I don't know. And that's the other thing you gotta remember too is that this isn't just competing against a uh, composite monitor. It's also competing against people's television sets because a lot of people just hooked up their Apple IIe to a TV. So in that situation, it's kind of like you've already paid for your TV, so it's free versus 800 plus dollars for this. That would definitely be a tough sell. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's pretty fancy. Yeah, that's our art show. Let's do a slideshow. What do we got for that? Nice. Yeah, I mean that. <laughs> and there's solid blue. That's what it should look like. Yeah, that's that's pretty nice. And there's our apple. It's whipping through these pretty fast. Yeah, so you know, maybe it's just the way that the RGB card interprets color is just different than this. And so when you send blue using the uh, the tricks that was devised to get it to look blue on composite, it comes out as a totally different color on this monitor, would be my guess. Uh, so we've done slideshow. Let's do video modes, because that shows off everything that this card can do. So here are all the regular modes that I believe composite can do. And then down here are the extra ones that composite can't do very well, um, including 16 color, medium res, two color, 560 by 192 with the option of mixing 80 column text, and then 16 color, 140 by 192 with the option of mixing 80 column text, and then a mix of modes nine and 10 anywhere on screen. So medium res, or uh, 560 by 192. So we'll do like number three first. Yeah, so there's the first comparison. I mean, that looks pretty nice. You got nice definition there, none of the grainy stuff going on. Yeah, it looks really nice. But again, $800 nice? I don't know. I don't think I would have spent that much money back in the day, quite honestly. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. And this would look pretty good with some of those new low res games that people have been developing for the two. I don't know how much further this goes. Okay, well that gives us an idea anyway. Uh, let's look at low res with 80 column text. Aha! Brick out, there we go. And yeah, I mean that's typically what it looks like. I think on the original Apple II it had more of a red color for the background. Yeah, that's, that's way clearer. <laughs> that's just way clearer. Okay, let's return to the menu. Okay, let's try six color high res. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, it's pretty comparable to me. There's definitely more color in this side. And just wait. Looks good. So yeah, that gives us something of an idea anyway. It's definitely interpreting the colors differently over here. Okay, let's try number eight. Medium res with 80 column text. Yeah, it doesn't look like 80 column text to me. Okay, and the next one is two color, 560 by 192 with mixing of 80 column text. Oh yeah. Yeah, no, this thing's absolutely killing this one on that. That is nice and sharp, crisp, not whatever that is. <laughs> But again, this is probably not intended to be shown on a composite monitor, so this isn't really fair. That's not a mode this officially supports. Um, so we did two color. Let's do 16 color, 140 by 192, mixing 80 column text. What does that look like? 
Uh, it doesn't look like 80 column text to me. I think we got to have a chat about what 80 column text is, but yeah, that's, uh, that's what that is. And then this is the mix. Wow, yeah, that's, that's sharp. That's getting to where it's, it's kind of like EGA graphics almost. All right, so that's the Video 7 demo disc. Okay, so just for fun, we're gonna try a pretty much brand new game. This is Spell Wielder. It was made by Crow Cousins. And we'll see what this looks like. Yeah, definitely clearer over there, but I don't know, in some ways it kind of looks a little better on the composite to me. It's just more varied with the textures and color variations. I don't have the mocking board installed, unfortunately, so we're not going to get the sound from this. But yeah, it's kind of a choice between sharpness or just having a bit more color intensity. Good rhyme, good rhyming. All right. This is heavy duty. OneDrive, not the Microsoft, literally OneDrive. And this game looks just awesome, by the way. I gotta shoot him a donation for this because they did a really great job. I mean, honestly, I don't know. I mean, it's kind of a trade-off. You got some really nice sharpness over here. You've got a quite a bit more color intensity over here. And I mean, the hearts are nice and red, like I assume they should be, but uh, they're more like orange over here. And you're definitely more pixelated. Now, as a classic Apple II enthusiast, I probably would like this better uh, in some ways, but uh, there's no denying that this is Really nice. The shards are calling. Okay, whatever. Kind of reminds me a little bit of Zelda. Nice. So that's the magic power, I guess, if I fire it. Huh, okay, I don't know how that works. <laughs>
Okay, so that sort of gives us an idea as to what an Apple IIe equipped with the Apple slash Video 7 RGB card can do. Now let's fire up my Apple III, which already has RGB color graphics built in, and see how things look in color there. All right, so here it is. This is the Apple III with the Color Monitor 3. And you can see that these two are kind of designed to go together. If you look from the side profile, you can see the angle of the monitor coming up to match the angle of the front of the Apple III's case. Um, I've seen this combination in pictures before and I thought it looked a little weird because with the Apple Monitor 3, you cover basically the full width of the front of the case and it, it just looks more seamless. But this, uh, you know, looking at it now, it doesn't look bad. It would look closer if my Apple III wasn't so badly yellowed, I think. But yeah, this looks just like a, like a classic 80s computer. Okay, so as far as testing goes, uh, what I'm thinking we're gonna do is we'll just fire up some basic text-based applications. We'll fire up an Apple III specific game just to see what it looks like, if there's any color. And uh, then we'll fire up the Apple II emulator and we'll put some of the software for the Apple II in there if it will run. And we'll just see if there's any difference in how colors are presented versus the uh, Video 7 card from the Apple IIe. I don't really know a lot about the color circuit in the Apple III. I don't know if it's basically identical to the Video 7 card in the Apple IIe or if it's something different. But uh, yeah, let's get a look. Okay, so the first thing I'm noticing, obviously, is the text is bright white, which is what it should have been on the Apple II. So that's got me kind of wondering now. Oh, and it crashed. <laughs> well, there goes our word test, but uh, let me try. That was Apple Writer. That one didn't seem to want to work. I'll try Business Basic. But yeah, the white text has got me wondering if there's something going on with the Video 7 card and my Apple IIe, because this is what it should look like. I don't think that yellow color is a color they would have wanted, even as an option. All right, there's base. You can actually hear the monitor kind of humming a little bit as it places some of the text. All right, so there's basic. I mean, that looks nice and sharp. And of course, if I wanted to switch into monochrome mode and make it look like it did on the Apple III, then I've got it like that. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but. So this will just be sort of the classic count program again. Yeah, I mean, that looks pretty good. Uh, I, it doesn't look bad on the Apple III monochrome monitor. It just, uh, it, yeah, it's nice and crisp here. Nothing really exciting or exceptional about that, but yeah, there it is. So this next one is Apple III Sandman. I think it's kind of like a Pac-Man clone. I've never seen it in color before, but I've heard it does run in color. Oh, wow. Yeah, no, that, that's full on RGB right there. That looks great. I don't know exactly when this game was made, but clearly it was made with color in mind. Oh yeah, that looks good. Oops, i to find my arrow keys. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, where the whole, I don't know what it is with Apple and not giving us proper arrow keys, it's crazy. Ah. Like, you, your finger wants to go to the left, to the right. But yeah, I mean, those colors are nice and sharp. The intensity is really good. 
So yeah, I'm tempted to think something's up with the Video 7 card and the Apple IIe because it did not look this good. It wasn't bright and vibrant like it is now. Right, right, down, right, up. Yeah, this sucks. I don't... Ah! I'm doing it myself here. But yeah, that is, that's nice and sharp, vibrant. If regular Apple II graphics look this good, that'd be really nice. I don't know what these waz light bulb things are either. All right, well, that's enough of that. Okay, so we're gonna try firing up the Apple II emulator and then I'll see if I can get any games to run with that. Let's check our configuration here. Yeah, no, everything looks okay. Okay. Yeah, I know you wanna boot something. Just hang on a second here. Let's see what happens. I want to see if this murder manor thing works or not. This should be interesting. Nope. <laughs> we'll find one. I know for sure there's a couple games that this will run. Okay, let's see if we can get Load Runner to go. Well, that runs, but not in color. Interesting. I mean, it looks okay, but without color, it's not quite the same. I don't remember how to control this. Oh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> well, that was quick. Good game, good game. Let's, uh... Let's take that one out. I'll try one more. I'll try Spell Wielder, because I'm really curious. I highly doubt it'll work, but we gotta try. Requires 64K. All right, so that's, that's pretty definitive there. Okay, so hopefully this video has given you a decent look at this very rare Apple Color Monitor 100 and the difference between living in RGB City versus Compositeville. And I have to say overall, I'm impressed with the performance of this thing on both the Apple II and the Apple III. The Monitor 100's sharpness and performance is fantastic and gives both machines a needed boost in graphics and color quality in particular. That said, $800 buys a lot of other things and I'm confident that the reason this monitor didn't light a fire with Apple II users was due to that price tag and the difference not being quite big enough to motivate a switch. Maybe a killer app would have motivated people more, but even then the vast majority of Apple II software producers designed with composite in mind. If you were already used to it, you probably weren't going to reach deep into your wallet for this. Now, the Apple III, on the other hand, well, retail on that machine was close to $5,000, so if you were inclined to spend that much in the first place, $800 wasn't going to be a deal breaker. I do like the green of the Apple III monochrome monitor, but using the Apple Color Monitor 100 makes me wonder about what might have been if Apple had brought the price down, avoided quality control issues, and kept full Apple II compatibility, offering the unit as a direct replacement for the two even in the home. We only have a limited taste of what was possible software-wise with a color Apple III here, but what I've seen convinces me that having 16 color RGB as more of a standard option might have made a difference. Personally, I'm thrilled to have this rare vintage monitor finally in my collection and look forward to exploring and enjoying the RGB difference on both machines. I will definitely have a look at the extended 80 column RGB card for the 2E and figure out why we're not getting white text and see what other software I can find to take advantage of this unique piece of Apple hardware. Anyway, as always, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Thank you.